to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. Today we are blessed with the Synod staff to lead us in this worship experience. I'd like to introduce our bishop, Bishop Sue Briner. Greetings in the name of the Triune God. It is my joy to partner today with Abiding Presence Lutheran Church in San Antonio to bring you this Trinity Worship Service of the Word. I want to thank Pastor Steve and his staff for the work with us in bringing this to all of you. We are truly better together than we could ever be apart. This worship service reflects the reality of the discord that we are living in right now as a nation because of the sin of racism, as well as the hope that we share in the gospel of Jesus Christ. May we not tire of doing the work we are called to do in the name of Jesus. Before the glory of your triune presence, O God, we lament the ways we have fallen short of your will for us. We confess to you that we have been blind to the wounds caused by the persistent force of racism in our church and our society. Lead us to see the truth. White privilege has built a wall around the abundance of creation you meant for us all. God, God have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we have chosen to remain silent or look away when the anger and hatred of white supremacy erupts before us and inflicts harm and death on your children of color. Make us feel the pain as if it were our own so that we can truly claim each other as siblings joined by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the grace of the Trinity. God, God have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we have been comfortable with our predominantly white church that we have become passive in our call to welcome the neighbor, that we have justified our closed doors in a way that mock the holy gospel we claim as our core. Open our hearts to the sacred possibilities you offer through your word, that we will come to you only in spirit and truth and nothing more. God, God have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we forget that the place where we gather today is land you created for all your people. Help us to atone for the legacy of greed and violence that destroyed the common good you intended for us in sharing the bounty of the earth. God, God have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we deny the prosperity some of us enjoy is the legacy of bondage and torture of black bodies. That we deny our history of slavery is a sin that taints the very foundation of our country. Humble us to accept that we can love our country and abhor its sins, that we may reconcile the past and be united by the light of your love in the future. God, God have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that as church, we have rejected the call to be a model of unconditional love, a source of compassion, a place for healing and reconciliation. Instead, we have allowed worldly influences such as politics, materialism, social status, and personal comfort to hold us hostage and keep us from fulfilling our baptismal promises to you. Give us the strength to confront the ways we have strayed and fortitude to rebuild ourselves to reflect your glory. God, God have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We pray that you hear us and wrap us in your healing love as we seek forgiveness for these and other transgressions that we have yet to discover. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit, trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the skies who separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. God said, let the waters bring form swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. 
God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude, and on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Lord, your name is glorious, it resounds through all the earth. Lord, your name is glorious, it resounds through all the earth. Lord, our Lord, your glorious name, all your wondrous works proclaim. In the heavens with radiant signs, evermore your glory shines. Lord, your name is glorious. It resounds through all the earth. Infant voices chant your praise telling all your glorious ways weakest means work out your will mighty falls your cause to still lord your name is glorious it resounds through all the earth moon and stars in shining Nightly tell the Maker's might When I view the heavens afar Then I know how small we are Lord, your name is glorious It resounds through all the earth Who are we that we in your love and tender care, raised to high, exalted height, crowned with 
with honor in your sight. Lord, your name is glorious. It resounds through all the earth. With dominion crowned we stand o'er the creatures of your hand. All to a subjection yield in the sea and air and field. Lord, your name is glorious. It resounds through all the earth. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning, children and friends. This morning, I want to talk to you about the first lesson that we heard. It was the creation story. And in it, there is a piece that talks about being created in the image of God. And you know, this week, there has been a lot of things happening to people. People haven't been very nice to one another. And that's not making God very happy. And it doesn't make us happy either. But this story that we read and heard about being created in the image of God will hopefully remind us that we should love one another and that God loves one another. So I have an exercise for us to do. I want you after this to either get a handheld mirror or go to your bedroom or bathroom where there is a mirror. And I want you to take a look in the mirror. Do you realize that when you look in the mirror or you put the mirror towards something, whatever is in front of the mirror, it will reflect the image or whatever it has in front of it. So when I look in the mirror, I see myself. And I hope when you look in the mirror, you see yourself. And did you know that you are also seeing the image of God because God created you. Isn't that amazing? One way that you can remember that you were created in the image of God is by taking a piece of paper and writing on the image of God. And then you can place it on your mirror, in your bathroom, in your bedroom, or even on your handheld mirror. And every time you look into that mirror, it's a great reminder that God created you and God loves you. And as you go throughout this week, I want you to remember, as you look at one another, your family and your friends, the people outside, the people in the stores, the people on TV, and even the people who aren't being nice to one another, that they too are created in the image of God and that God loves them. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for creating us in your image. Thank you for loving us. Help us to love one another and to be kind to one another. In your name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. 
the gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the son whom Moses called word and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how. But I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly 
We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed, handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many, black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was an incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. We pray especially for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth, and our synod bishop, Sue Briner, and staff. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ in prayer, in action, 
Strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, great. is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all who are mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd, and the many who came before him. Hold in your loving embrace all who are experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you accompany us, accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day, especially those whose names we present before you in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free our hearts and minds to do this difficult work in our congregations and in our communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that the places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us, with those in your home. And if you have the ability to, text someone right now. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
would just like to remind you that this is an opportunity for you to be sure to share your offering with your own congregation. Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life as we use each blessing for service in your name and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 